Hi, thanks for joining us for today's message from Calvary and Lake Havasu. We are in the Message to a Messed Up Church series, and today we'll be focusing on God the Builder. The scriptures we'll be looking at are in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 1 through 32. If you'd like to follow along with the Life Notes, you can find them at calvaryaz.com forward slash life notes. Now, here's Pastor Peter Bunnell. Well, I'm glad to be with you guys all tonight. Um, Pastor Chad is still uh, on his mission trip in Greece. He will be back next week. I know you guys will be excited to see him back up here on the stage. Um, We are going to be continuing our message to a messed up church in 1 Corinthians. So if you want to grab a Bible or your Bible app and open to 1 Corinthians 3, you can find a Bible in the seat in front of you if you need one. If you're joining us from the Parker campus, thank you for being there today and want to just encourage you, you can grab a Bible at the back of the room. They're on the table there. And uh, you can also find 1 Corinthians 3. If you're using the Bibles here in the room, that's page 1132, page 1132. Now, while we're finding it, I have a quick little survey that I wanna ask you guys. You can vote by raising your hand. How many of you guys like home renovation shows? Just show me your hands, okay. I was thinking it would be popular, okay, since we have a whole entire network devoted to home improvement shows. Um, Let's find out which one is your favorite between Fixer Upper or Hometown, okay? So if you're a fan of Chip and Joanna Gaines with Fixer Upper, raise your hand. I'm gonna see who wins here, okay? How about Hometown, Ben and Aaron, raise your hands. Okay, I'm in the minority because I like Ben and Aaron. I like Hometown, but it looks like Chip and Joanna won. You know, we love home improvement shows, right? We tune in and we see all these amazing things that professionals can do with a home. And no matter how many of these shows that you watch, you find something you can do to your own home, right? So my honeydew list keeps getting longer and longer with every single show that I watch. Uh, If you've had kids in your home over the last couple of decades or you grew up over the last couple of decades, you might be familiar with a different home improvement show, Bob the Builder. How many of you know Bob the Builder? Raise your hand. Okay, and now keep your hands up if you know the theme song. Okay, don't make me sing it alone. Bob the Builder, can we fix it? Bob the Builder, yes we can. All right, good. That's the theme song. And you're welcome. You'll be singing that throughout the rest of your week. You won't get it out of your head. It's stuck there now. So Bob the Builder and his talking tractor and all his talking equipment would be able to use teamwork to solve any problem, right? Because Bob the Builder had a plan. Well, as we look at 1 Corinthians chapter 3, we're going to see that God is the builder. God is the builder of our lives. He is the builder of our church, and he has a plan. So the, the slogan that I want to stick in your mind, if you forget everything else that I say, Remember that God is the builder. Can we fix it? Yes, we can. Because God has a blueprint. He has a plan, and we can see it in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. So let's take a look and find out how a messed up church can become a fixed up church. We're going to look at just the first nine verses to start with. It says, But I, brothers, could not address you as spiritual people, but as people of the flesh, as infants in Christ. I fed you with milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for it. And even now you are not ready, for you are still in the flesh. For while there are uh, jealousy and strife among you, are you not of the flesh and behaving only in a human way? For when, when one says, I follow Paul, or another, I follow Apollos, are you not being merely human? What then is Apollos? What is Paul? Servants through whom you believed, as the Lord assigned to each. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. So neither he who plants nor he who waters is anything, but only God who gives the growth. He who plants and he who waters are one, and each will receive his wages according to his labor. For we are God's fellow workers, 
You are God's field, God's building. So the first part of the blueprint is that we need to make improvements. Make improvements. And what this means is we need to be pursuing spiritual maturity. Did you notice what Paul called the Corinthian believers? He called them a bunch of babies. He said, you are infants in Christ. It's like, hey, it's time to grow up, guys. You need to make some improvements. So why did he say they were babies? There's two things. It was based on what they were eating and how they were acting. So what were they eating? Well, it says that they were only able to drink milk. Now, he's not talking about real milk. He's talking about the word of God. A lot of times, the word of God is considered our food, right? Because from it, we get our spiritual nourishment. From God's word is where we get our energy and our understanding of life and our ability to live life. And he says to them, you're just drinking the milk. You just want the simple things. You're babies. You need to grow up. There's a lot of good depth here, but you're not able to take it yet because you're still eating baby food. So it's what they're eating, and it's also how they're acting. It says that they're still filled with jealousy and strife. That's what characterized their church. Jealousy and strife. It makes me picture a bunch of two and three-year-olds. You know how they play together. They don't, right? They grab toys from each other. They say mine. They say no but they don't get along. They're filled with strife and jealousy. And that's the way this church was. They needed to grow up. They needed to make some improvements. And God, the builder, has a plan for that. First, he reminds them that they are his, God's building, that God is the one who is bringing them together. It's not the people, it's not the pastors, it's not the big name preachers. It was just God who was causing the growth and causing them to get better and to improve. What does it say the pastors are here? Paul and Apollos, what does it say they are? It says they are servants, servants. They just do the simple task of planting and watering, but it's God who does the work. It's God who causes the growth. So when we um, consider this collectively, God calls us his field. So he's growing us. He's growing his church. And he calls it his building. God is building his church. And because God is building his church, we should be improving. We should be growing up. So this means collectively as a church, but it also means individually. Each of us individually, we can grow up, we can improve. And it's important, if we're doing that individually, we're gonna be doing that as a church as well. So how can we, what are some practical ways that we can start to grow up and to improve? I think one of the main ways is to start taking in some solid food from God's word. Take in the solid food of God's word. So first off, you hear us say this almost every weekend read and apply the Bible because it will change your life. If you need a Bible, take this Bible home. If you're in Parker, take the Bible home with you if you need it, and then read it. Read it, read as much of it as you can understand in one sitting, and then think about it. Think about what it means for your life. Another way that you can start to grow up and to make some improvements in your spiritual life is by joining a Bible study or joining a life group. When you have those opportunities to jump into a group, do it. Take advantage of that so that you can surround yourself with a circle of people that are also reading God's word, trying to dig in, trying to get the meat out of it to understand God better. And then here's another thing I want you to take advantage of. I would love for you all to take advantage of our Right Now Media account. Okay, Calvary has purchased a Right Now Media account for every person connected with our church. Even if you're online, if you're in Parker, if you're in the room, you can have a Right Now Media account. And what this is, is it is a collection of thousands and thousands of Bible studies 
from some of the best Bible teachers in the world. They're not just from America. They have people from all over the world teaching God's word. And you have the opportunity to dig deep, to learn more about God's word from getting one of these accounts. So let me encourage you to do that. And then once you get your account, the instructions are in the bulletin, they're up on the, on the slide. Once you get your account, I wanna encourage you to look up one in particular Bible study. It's called Resolving Everyday Conflict. This is like your homework if you want. Resolving Everyday Conflict. What was the church in Corinth going through? A bunch of fights, right? A bunch of division. They weren't united. That's life. We all encounter arguments, fights in our families, in our workplaces, and yes, even in our churches. And that Bible study will give you a chance to think through how do I enter into conflict in a way that honors God and glorifies God? Okay, so I wanna encourage you, that's your homework. Right now, media, resolving everyday conflicts. So make improvements, dive into God's word, get the meat of God's word. Let's look at what the second step is uh, in God's blueprint here. We'll start in verse 10. According to the grace of God given to me, like a skilled master builder, I laid a foundation, and someone else is building upon it. Let each one take care how he builds upon it, for no one can lay a foundation other than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if anyone builds on the foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will become manifest, for the day will disclose it because it will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test what sort of work each one has done. If the work that anyone has built on the foundation survives, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned up, he will suffer loss, though he himself will be saved, but only as through fire. So what's the next step? It is add on. Add on. We must encourage more people to follow Christ. That's what that means. We need to be adding on. Now, in order to do a good add-on into any house, you have to have a good foundation, right? A good foundation. When you're watching an HGTV home reno show and they say, oh no, I've got bad news. The foundation's bad. You're guaranteed that most of the money that that family saved up for that rental project is going for the foundation. You know, they make a big deal about it in the shows. Uh, when I was looking to buy a home in Havasu, when I moved back in 2019, we found a nice home in a really nice neighborhood and we looked at it and we liked it. But as we were looking at the house, we noticed there was this crack going through the tile and it just kept going and it went to a wall, and then the crack went up the wall, and then it was right by a door frame, and the door frame was crooked. And we're like, um, this house has a foundation problem. And we didn't wanna have anything to do with it, right? So we walked away from that. Foundations are really important. You wanna have a good foundation. Um, foundations are also kind of consistent. I grew up in Lake Havasu, and in the early 90s, during that you know, construction boom, one of the things we liked to do was to go into these houses that were being built. Now, this is probably illegal. It's probably trespassing. I'm not condoning this. But, but we would love to go in and look at the houses as they were going up and try and guess, you know, oh, what room is this? You know, what is this room gonna be? Um, and it's Havasu, it's the land of custom homes. And so every floor plan was a little bit different, but do you know what was never different? The foundation. The foundation was always concrete. Every one of them, because it's the best foundation, right? I never went into a home and saw a plyboard foundation, never. I never went to a home and the contractor just said, hey, you know what? Let's just build it on the dirt. It will be okay. Okay, it was always on concrete because that is a solid foundation for building. 
Now, when we talk about our foundation as a church, as we talk about our foundation as a believer in Christ, that foundation is Jesus Christ. That's what it says in verse 11. It says that the foundation is Jesus Christ. But we need a little bit more information than just that because we could say Jesus is the foundation and we could just say because he was a good teacher. So we wanna build on his teaching. Or we might say Jesus had a lot of love for people and so we wanna be loving like he was. And those are all partially true, but that's not a full foundation. When we say our foundation is Jesus Christ, it means much more than that. So I was trying to think through how I could put this in one sentence. So I came up with this. Based on the perfect word of God, we know that God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are unified as one, securing our salvation through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus so that we can be forgiven of our sin and receive the grace of God through faith. That sentence is a solid foundation. That sentence is actually Calvary's five main doctrinal points all mashed together in one sentence. We believe it because it's God's word. It's the Trinity, it's God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit working together to secure our salvation through the perfect life, death, and resurrection of Jesus so that we can be saved from our sin, so we can be forgiven of our sin, and through faith we can access that grace of God that we all need so desperately. That's the foundation that we proclaim. That's the foundation that we want to build on. So my question for those of us in this room tonight is what is your foundation? What are you building your life on? I certainly hope that it's Jesus. But in a room with this many people in it, I know there are people that are building their life on their family. Family is the key thing, and they're doing their best to have a great and awesome family. I know there's others in this room that are trying to build their life on success and meeting financial goals. There's others in this room that are building their life on having a good time and finding some fun and finding some pleasure. All of those foundations, they're gonna crumble. They're gonna crack. So I wanna invite you to turn away from those foundations and build your life on Jesus Christ, to trust in him as your savior. And if you're doing that today for the first time, find one of the pastors, tell us, come up and talk to the prayer team at the end, let them know, because we wanna pray with you, we wanna celebrate with you, because that's a radical shift. That's getting on the solid foundation. And once you're on that solid foundation, then you can begin to add on. You can build on to that foundation. Paul says that we want to build on the things that will last, things that are consistent with the foundation that we're built upon. He uses the term like gold or precious stone. Those are the things that are gonna last. The, thing that aren't, the things that aren't, the hay, the straw, those things are gonna burn. They won't last. You know, we can cover up a foundation problem with carpet, right? But carpet eventually deteriorates and carpet will burn up eventually. We can cover a crack in our wall with shiplap. Shiplap is really popular, right? We can shiplap our life, right? So we don't see the mess underneath, but that's not what God wants for us. Um, we need to build with things that are going to last. So, so we're talking spiritually here. How do we know those things that are spiritually gonna last in our church and in our own life? Well, I think we can answer a few questions. Does it proclaim the message of Jesus? The things that we add on, the ministries that we do, does it proclaim the message of Jesus? That's very important. Is it consistent with God's word? The things that we add on, if, it, if it's consistent with God's word, do you know what? It's gonna last. It's gonna last and it's worth adding on to our life. And then of course it needs to promote the love of God and the love of others. The two greatest commandments that we would love the Lord our God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength and to love our neighbor as ourself. Those are the things that adding on should be characterized by because those are things that are gonna last. 
you know, we just celebrated Kayla's baptism. And talking to her dad about what happened, she was spending a lot of time around church people over the last couple of weeks. And as she spent time around the church people, she noticed that they were different, they were kind, they were loving, they were considerate, and she asked her dad, why? Why are they like this? And he was able to say it's because of Jesus. And that's when she said, I want Jesus in my life. That is beautiful, and that is adding on something that will last for eternity. It wasn't because of a fancy sermon. It wasn't because of a fancy program. It was because of you all living a life that honors Christ and somebody seeing that and knowing that Jesus is what makes the difference. So when we serve as a church, when we do ministry, when you go out in the community and you're interacting with people, I hope that the way you live and the way you serve can always point back to a solid foundation, to Jesus Christ. When people see the good that you do, they should know that it's because of your God. When people see the love that you offer them, they should know that it's because of God's love that you've experienced. When people see life change in you, they should know that it's because of the cross of Jesus that has made that difference. When people see your service that you offer, they should be able to also know that it's because of the Savior that you serve. That's how we add on what will last. So we need to make improvements. We need to add on. And then the last part of God's plan here in 1 Corinthians 3 is that we need to remember the resident. So let's look at uh, verse 16 here. Do you not know that you are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy him. For God's temple is holy, and you are that temple. Let no one deceive himself. If anyone among you thinks that he is wise in this age, let him become a fool, that he may become wise. For the wisdom of this world is folly with God. For it is written, he catches the wise in their craftiness. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise, that they are futile. So let no one boast in men, for all things are yours whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas, or the world or life or death, or the present or the future, all are yours, and you are Christ's, and Christ is God's. So we need to remember the resident, and that means that we need to know that the Holy Spirit dwells in us. The Holy Spirit dwells in us. Those home improvement shows, they're always remembering the person that lives there, right? Right? They want to know what colors they like. They want to know what the room is going to be used for. They want to know what things they want in the room and, and how many people are going to be using the room. They want to know all of this stuff when they do that home reno. They always remember the resident, the one who lives there. When was the last time you thought about the fact that the Holy Spirit lives in you? not just in you individually, but in you all collectively, that's a pretty different way to think, isn't it? When you think about the Holy Spirit dwelling in us, we need to reflect the fact that he's there. And like his name implies, he is holy. He is perfect. He is without sin. And so collectively, we as a church should be marked by holiness. Now, we're, we've been declared holy. When we trust in Jesus, he declares us holy. That's a great gift. That's a great blessing. But then we need to live that out. We could ignore that declaration, couldn't we? We could just pretend that that was never said about us and live whatever way we want to live. But that's not what God wants from us. He wants us to reflect his holiness, because we are the dwelling of the Holy Spirit. So our community should see Christ in us, and we should see the Holy Spirit in one another. It changes what we're thinking when we come to worship on a weekend. You know, when you say, I'm going to church, 
Do you think about a big bronze building off of Highway 95? Or if you're in Parker, are you saying, I'm going to church and my church is gonna be finished as soon as that renovation project is done and we get to move into that newly, freshly renovated building? That's not what we should be thinking about because the church is not the building. The church is the people. It's us who are following Christ. So when you come, it's not about the building. It's not about the chairs. It's not about the seats. It's about the people that you interact with. So it's the way that you greet people shows that you remember the Holy Spirit is there. The way that you go to meet somebody who's new that shows that the Holy Spirit is a part of that interaction. It's the way you scoot over to provide a seat for somebody at the end. It's the way that you are willing to step out of your comfort zone so that others can be served so that you can connect with others in a life group or you can connect with others through a ministry or you can greet someone at the door. It's because the Holy Spirit is indwelling us that we interact in that way. Another practical application that Paul points out is that we don't want to destroy the temple. We don't want to destroy each other. So those divisions, those disputes, those arguments they destroy the temple of the Holy Spirit because that's each other. So we don't wanna be destroying each other. We wanna let our own opinions and our own preferences and the things that we might really like to fight about, we wanna let those go because we don't wanna destroy one another. And then finally, Paul says that we need to boast in Jesus. Boast in Jesus. We're not big on following men. We're not gonna boast about our pastors. We're not gonna boast about our ministry. We're not gonna boast about our life group leader. We're not gonna boast about these things that are secondary. We wanna boast about Jesus Christ because he's the one that is the builder. He is the one that's at work. He is the one that's causing the growth and we belong to him. What a blessing that is. So as we wrap up, what needs to be fixed in your life? Or what needs to be fixed in our church? Because no doubt there are things. There are things that need to fix in my life. There's things that need to be fixed in our church. We need greater maturity. I need greater maturity. We need to pursue greater depth in God's word. So this week, my challenge to you is to take some step to grow in your relationship with God by getting to know his word better. We need to encourage more people to find life change through faith in Jesus. So do a foundation check today. What are you building your life on? Hopefully it's on Jesus Christ and that full truth of all that he is and all that he's done. And then if you're on that solid foundation, will you help others to get on that foundation too? You have a role to play in serving others and in proclaiming that important truth. So this week, will you engage in some way to serve someone else to magnify your Savior? And finally, let's remember that the Holy Spirit dwells in us, that we together are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And let that change the way you relate to one another. Let it help us to pursue unity and let our own opinions and our own desires take a back seat. So is there something messed up in your life? In our church, remember that God is the builder. Can we fix it? Yes, we can. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for your word because it really molds our hearts, it changes our minds, it helps our life to become different. Lord, thank you for this great truth of how you have built our lives, how you have given us a solid foundation, and how we can add on to that foundation through our service, through our knowledge of you, through growing up in your word, and through remembering that your Holy Spirit dwells in us. Lord, I do pray for great unity in our church, in every one of our campuses, in Lake Havasu, Sweetwater, McCulloch, online and in Parker. God, make us a unified people 
that are moving together for your kingdom and for your building. Pray this in Jesus' name, amen. As we pursue spiritual maturity, be mindful that the Holy Spirit dwells in us. We should be excited to share the good news of the gospel so more will come to life changed through Jesus. If today's message spoke to you and you'd like to support the ministry of Calvary, you can do so by visiting our website, calvaryaz.com. The homepage has links to contact us, to give, listen to past sermons, and subscribe to the Word for the Day daily devotionals. Well, that's it for today. I hope you join us again next week. Bye-bye.